Do synthetic materials suck? Are they really much worse than, say, natural materials and fragrance? I'm gonna discuss this topic because it's a frequently, I think, misunderstood topic in the fragrance world. Here from the Biltmore Hotel, one of the most historic hotels in Miami, and a, quote, synthetic, I think, beauty in the world. So, perfect setting for this topic. Stay tuned because it's coming up next. Just a quick view of the Biltmore Estate. This is from the back looking up. And again, just showing some synthetic beauty. This is obviously not natural beauty, but at the very top, you see the very, very, very top way up there, that's known as the Al Capone Suite. He stayed there once many years ago, like 100 years ago, whenever this hotel was built. And it was armed and guarded, and it was like a fortress up there. But anyways, my video coming up next. One more piece of synthetic beauty. This is the Biltmore Pool. At one time, many years ago, this was the largest resort pool in the United States. You can see it just kind of goes on forever and it goes around the corner over there. Beautiful. But again, just another example of some synthetic beauty and video right around the corner. Welcome back everybody to Joel The Nose, coming to you from the Biltmore Hotel and Resort in Miami. It's in Coral Gables here in Miami, one of the kind of nicer, older sections of Miami. This hotel goes back, I think over 100 years. It's a national historic place. They've had large international summits here. It's just a real beauty. You can see that uh, behind me, I'm sitting in this courtyard and uh, it's just an amazing place, a lot of weddings here, you know, celebrations, beautiful golf course. But it's just, the reason why I'm doing the, the uh, video here today is because it is a place of, I would call, synthetic beauty, right? This is not natural beauty. This is not where I often bring you videos from, from say, tropical botanical gardens or maybe the ocean here in Miami. This is a architectural gem. It is something that's been created man-made. This is not something obviously created by nature. So I think it's a perfect, again, uh, backdrop to my topic today. And I want to go over, I'm going to try to keep this simple. And I may do another follow-up video because this could go on for a long time talking about this topic of synthetic versus natural fragrance materials. But I'm going to go over kind of three what I think are common misconceptions sometimes outright lies but i'd say more for most people they're just kind of three mistakes three kind of misconceptions about synthetic materials the first and this is a very commonly held misconception is that synthetic materials or perfumes or fragrances cause more allergies than natural materials and that is 100 percent false scientifically false and the reason why is a synthetic molecule or material let's just say for example take um, a, synth a synthetic material for sandalwood sandalwood is a very expensive hard to resource natural material also because the trees because of sustainability we don't want to cut down on those trees so it can be very difficult to, to get so the fragrance community, companies like IFF, Simrise, um, Givaudan, these are our fragrance companies that create chemicals and fragrances, right? They've developed a lot of synthetic materials, for example, for sandalwood. And that fragrance, if let's just pick one synthetic material for sandalwood, that is composed of one molecule. So if I put that into my fragrance, if I'm a perfumer and I'm using a synthetic sandalwood, that's one molecule versus, for example, natural sandalwood may have hundreds, could have 100, 200, 300, 400 different material or molecules that make up that natural component. So if you have allergies, think about this. What are your chances of being allergic to just one molecule versus if there's, say, 100 or 200 molecules in that sandalwood? you have a much higher probability that you're gonna be allergic to, you know, 
two, one of those two or 300 materials than just one. So that is one kind of, I guess, you know, urban legend or myth about synthetic versus natural materials. Let me go over a second commonly held misconception is that synthetics are always cheaper alternative to natural materials. Again, while that may be true in a lot of cases, of course, organically uh, sustainable sourced oud from an oud farm is gonna typically be much more expensive. Again, sandalwood, orris butter, things that are very hard to distill and extract small amounts from large, uh, say, you know, from a large gathering of natural materials may produce just a small amount that takes a lot of money and effort, okay? But synthetic materials also can be very expensive. Again, take a synthetic material that requires lots of science to get it just right and lots of, lots of chemistry. And then you take in a scientist and a company will have a patent on that. You can't patent rose, a natural rose or a natural sandalwood, but you can patent one of your synthetic materials. So let's say you create something that's truly loved in one. Let's say, let's take rose now. Let's say you create a rose molecule or synthetic material that, that people just love and therefore perfumers and other companies want to take that, that you know, synthetic material from your company. There's two costs to synthetic materials. There's internal and external. Internal is, let's just say again, I am a perfumer for Gilles Verdun, and I have a great rose synthetic material that people like. If I am a celebrity that wants to create my own perfume and I go to Gilles Verdun to have them create my perfume, and Gilles Verdun has that synthetic rose that I like, well, I pay them, right? I have to pay them, again, because they have a patent, and it's theirs, they've developed, they've spent research and development, I pay them, that's an internal price. Now, if I, for example, am again a celebrity and I go to IFF to create a perfumer at IFF to create my fragrance, but I really, really love a particular synthetic rose that was created by Givaudan, the perfumer at IFF has to go to Givaudan and they now have to pay Givaudan to buy that. So now you have an added cost on it. Givaudan is now gonna upsell and upcharge me, the celebrity or whoever's requesting to make the perfume. So now you have two added in costs. So that can get very expensive. And a lot of times, this is interesting, the synthetic material kind of fluctuates with the cost of the natural material, whether it be rose, amber, sandalwood. That's not necessarily, I guess, rational, but it happens. So. Number two point, the reality is, is that since some synthetic materials also cost a lot more than natural materials, like orange blossom and neroli, that's very prevalent, it's actually pretty cheap, okay? So um, that's, again, something to think about when you're looking at fragrances and costs and synthetic, synthetic versus natural materials. My last point, this one I think is the most interesting. I think it's a commonly held belief, and actually it's not just my theory, this has been tested in studies, that people believe synthetic materials smell worse than natural materials. But when it's put to the test, people actually can't tell the difference, okay? This is again a very interesting concept. I've talked about this before. I actually have a study here from, again, Rachel Hertz, Dr. Rachel Hertz, who's done a bunch of studies on olfactory senses and the nose and smell. And what she found is that when people are given what they think is either, either synthetic or a natural material in a blind test, they always rate the fragrance that they're given or the smell they're given as better if they're told that it's organic versus when it's synthetic. And they rate the one that's quote synthetic as worse. But when they're actually given opposite or they're, they're told something and then they smell it, they actually are wrong. So they. What they found is that people cannot tell the difference between synthetic and natural materials in scientific studies. It's the same as they get it right the same amount of times as the flip of a coin 50-50. So even though people rate some organic better or natural, I say organic, natural materials better than synthetic materials, when put to the test, they actually can't tell the difference on their nose when they're smelling it in blind controlled scientific studies. 
All right. Right? That's, that's kind of interesting. So what, what is my point to kind of wrap all this up? I love organic and natural materials. I love natural materials. The best houses, I think, use them both well, okay? Look at a, a world-famous, legendary perfumer, Jean-Claude Elena, who was the in-house perfumer for Hermes for years. Actually, I've read a book by him where two-thirds of the materials that he uses on a regular basis are synthetic and one-third are natural. So I think perfumers, and, and that may be the opposite for other perfumers, but the reality is, is synth synthetics are important, they're good, they can smell great, and the reality is most people can't really tell the difference. They think they can, right? You think you can, I think I can. I think, oh, that, you know, you always hear, that smelled synthetic, right? <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that there's certain perfumes out there that actually use really cheap synthetic materials or, you know, so of course that, that will happen. But if you have a quality perfume house using quality synthetic materials, the reality is you're not gonna be able to tell the difference most times. And there's a couple theories about that. And, and one of that is, is because we're used to smelling synthetic materials. We're used to smelling synthetic materials in all kinds of things from house cleaners to deodorants to perfumes. And therefore, when we smell that, it's more familiar to us than say the actual, actual natural material that may be in the wild. I digress. The reality is again, to kind of sum all this up is, natural materials are great when they're really good. Again, like really high quality oud from a company like Fragrance Dubois who grows it sustainably on their own oud farms, but also really good synthetic materials are good. And a mixture of both is important. Synthetic materials help with longevity and projection, so they're important for that in a fragrance. So don't just poo-poo something. When you see a fragrance and someone says, oh, it's synthetic or it smells synthetic, in reality is every good fragrance nowadays on the market really is a combination of both. And I wanted to dispel some commonly held beliefs about synthetic materials that just are not accurate. I hope you found this useful. This is Joel the Nose, of course, coming to you here uh, from the beautiful Biltmore Hotel. And I'm just gonna kind of scan this up to see if you can see that hotel. Look how, how high that goes up there. So anyways, I enjoyed doing this video today. The weather is beautiful today, spring weather. Hope everyone's having a great one. All I can say is just stay well, be safe, peace and love.